What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your host with the most, Avery, here. And destroy the ever-living boo-boo, staying off that like and subscribe button, climb even higher the 1500 ladder. I want to just dive right into today's video. I'm trying a little bit of a different way of doing videos. So, how long should a Yu-Gi-Oh deck be considered meta, or how long should it be a meta deck? How long should it be a viable deck? I've been seeing this conversation go around a lot uh, recently because of how long Snake Eyes has been a good deck. Um, you know, when you look at what is now pre the, now the previous format, which is I'm still trying to wrap my brain around that. When you look at the previous format uh, and how Snake Eyes was basically tier zero, arguably, actually I don't even think it's arguable at this point, and how it was tier zero for like over six months, you're looking at half a year for what the best deck is. And what's crazy to think about is that you really don't see decks last that long anymore. You know, ever since Konami started giving us three to four ban lists a year, you know, you would see the same decks be meta or the best decks in the room for multiple months at a time, but yet it wouldn't be like the tier zero or tier one best deck if you're not playing this, you're losing for six, seven, eight months at a time. You know, that was something that we saw, you know, over a decade ago now when we would get maybe two balance a year, like September and March, where you had the best deck being a tier one or basically tier zero deck. Uh, for almost an entire year because we only got two ban lists a year and it was insane the formats would get so stale because there was just no creativity you either played this one best deck in the room or you lost right and so seeing a deck like snake eyes essentially last two whole formats because remember we had things like Borload savage dragon link karibo and baron then they banned those cards, and then the deck adapted. Then we got Fiendsmith cards and adapted even more uh, to where then eventually some of those cards got hit. Now it's going to adapt again because it's getting Azamina cards in Rage of the Abyss, and it's just going to be a good deck again. So it's been good for damn near a year now, which is insane because you don't see a lot of decks last that long. There are some decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! that will be considered meta or good at say like the beginning of a format something that i think of is like tri brigade from a couple years ago or more recently branded and by extension sword soul you know sword soul was a tier one deck out of the gate when it released but then once it started to fall off it was more a deck that people would fall back to at the beginning of new formats in what i call the gladiator beast effect and for those of you who haven't been around for years like your boy has what I mean by the Gladiator Beast effect is that back in the day, there were some players, at least in my local area, I don't think that this was for like the entire community, but at least in my local area, there were a couple of players that anytime a new format began, they would go back to older decks until the format would be established, meaning they would go back to a deck that wasn't really touched and was consistently good in the form of Gladiator Beasts. I remember one player in particular, every format, he would go back to Gladiator Beasts at the beginning of every format until you know the meta was decided upon. And that was because Gladiator Beast was always a deck that was just sort of there in the back of the room waving high, asking you if you're going to finish that pizza, bro. And so it was a consistent deck that you could go back to, kind of like how people went back to Tri Brigade at the beginning of new formats, kind of like how people would go to Branded at the beginning of new formats. And now Branded, we have seen, has been around for years as a solid deck, and now Branded Fusion is finally at one. And Branded, I feel, is a deck that really shines as an example of a deck that has been around for quite some time, I think at least two or three years now, correct me if I'm wrong, and it's been consistently good, better in some formats, worse in others, especially now that we have Sanctifier and you can just gimmick puppet lock the opponent. But what is the timeline really for a deck that is meta or considered good and should be hit when you can't really factor in things like Power Creep? And I would say that any deck that lasts longer than I would say really four, maybe five months, which is kind of pushing it, I think you start to hit that point where you're like, okay, the deck needs to be checked. Because if you bring in new sets and power creep kicks in and the same decks are still doing good, then those decks should be hit to some capacity because clearly 
power creep isn't going to do anything to these decks. You know, again, look at Brandon and how long Brandon has been around and has just continued to evolve over the years to where now it's just a gimmick puppet lock deck. Like, let's just be honest here. No matter what form of Brandon you're playing, you're trying to gimmick puppet lock the opponent if you're going first, right? Like, if you're not doing that, you're just doing it wrong. So they finally hit the deck, but the deck's been around for years. Like, if you bought three of the Brandon structure deck, you know, however long ago that was, you made a very good investment because you could still play Brandon to this day and see success. It's just that the deck has evolved over the years with the addition of different branded cards as time has gone on. Again, with Simple Spoils being around for six months with Diga Bellstar, and then you add on the Snake Eyes cards, and then we get Fiendsmith, and then we're getting Azamina. It's like the deck would continue to evolve and just continue to be tier zero. Now it's finally being seen as a tier one deck post Rage of the Abyss because Konami made what I would say is some really solid hits. And so what I would like to see Konami do moving forward in the game is, yes, power creep is going to always be a thing. It's why Yu-Gi-Oh! is not the same today as it was in 2010. I'm sorry that you can't take your fucking 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh! deck into 2024 because you died a one Ash Blossom. That's called power creep. It is what it is, right? There's nothing we can do about that. However, having ban lists consistently every three to four months that check these meta decks once they've been around for between four to five months, anything longer, you need to start hitting cards in the deck. Hitting these decks at that four to five month mark, I think helps the overall game be more diverse. It gives more decks the ability to do well, and it gives the player base more choices. Now, am I saying that if Flunder is a tier one deck for a year, but it bricks on itself, should it be hit? No. I mean, if the representation isn't there, then obviously you don't need to hit that deck. Flunder was hit indirectly, though, because Prada Prosperity went to one. And it already had issues because it bricked on itself and you don't have a lot of non-engine space. So it was like, you know, it's kind of whatever. We're not out here saying that Flunderies m pin needs to be banned. Like, there's no reason to. If you're losing to Flunder, like, you probably just need to play a different deck. Like, or they're just getting lucky and hitting you with Shifter every fucking game. But even as a meta player myself, we need to do something about these decks that are around for months and months and months at a time to where the community is posting barfing horse memes all over Twitter and Facebook in the hopes of, you know, seeing Snake Eyes cards get banned. We can't have another Snake Eyes situation where it's the best deck for like six to seven months before we finally see some kind of hits to the deck. And what's going to be interesting about this next balance that we'll get in a few months is are they going to hit Snake Eyes even more? Because honestly, they really should. But they should also hit you, Bell. They should also maybe hit Centurion. Maybe not, because it is getting new support. But that's all neither here nor there. I really want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Again, I'm sorry I haven't posted in a few days. I've been dealing with a lot of personal stuff. But this has been on my mind the past few days. And I think that in order to maintain diversity in the game so that we're, we don't end up in these tier 0 formats, you need to hit these decks sooner rather than later. Or they need to be designed in such a way to where power creep kind of takes care of them. Not to the point where power creep comes in and then all of a sudden they're unplayable, you know, one set later. But so that they can be in harmony with other decks and that you're not constantly giving them new support like in the case of Snake Eyes and they just keep adapting, getting better and better. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.